why is this rare Taylor Swift t-shirt hanging up on my wall? Well, most people don't remember this, but in 2016, most of pop culture thought that Taylor Swift was over. And it's all because Kim Kardashian released a secretly recorded phone conversation between Taylor Swift and her then-husband, Kanye. <laughs> it's obviously very tongue-in-cheek. And I really appreciate you telling me about it. That's really nice. I thought like I just had a responsibility to you as a friend, you know. Thanks for being, like, so cool about it. This recording proved that Taylor Swift had lied to her fans about not approving a controversial lyric. She made it seem like she didn't know anything about the song and she was completely outraged by the song. And now, come to find out, he did call her. But more about that later. Hashtag Taylor Swift is over party was the number one trend on Twitter world. Wide. Do you know how many people have to be tweeting that they hate you for that to happen? It was the final nail in the coffin for Taylor Swift's squeaky clean apple pie image. And that's when this viral t-shirt came out. It said, In memory of Taylor Swift, 1989 to 2016, rest in peace. It sold out in seconds. Which brings us to Scooter Braun. Ugh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Face. Yes, adding insult to injury. Scooter Braun, Kanye West's manager at the time, secretly buys the masters to her entire music catalog right from under her nose. And so you, you didn't see it coming? No. So how did you find out? I found out when it was online. And then he tells her that she can no longer perform her songs at award shows. This feels like it's more than music now at this point. Most days I'm like, okay. But then sometimes I'm just like... It just gets loud sometimes. This emotional version of Taylor Swift is so many artists I know right now. Left for dead, discounted, overlooked. That's why it's so important for you guys to know the whole story behind how she overcame all that adversity, how she rose from the ashes, despite being manipulated and violated by the haters to become the biggest artist in the world right now. Today we are reading from the playbook of Taylor Swift. Most of you, when you're down, you start licking your wounds and tell yourself you need time off and then you disappear. But that's the opposite of what you should be doing. When the world is working against you, that's when you need to do the three ingenious things that Taylor Swift did to win. Starting off with, build your army. Your biggest allies in the world are your fans, whether you have three million of them or only 10 right now. It's honestly the most amazing feeling knowing that there's this group of people that has my back. Taylor Swift is unstoppable because she understands the power of her community and she nurtures that relationship nonstop. If anybody is watching this, thank you so much. I'm really excited about sharing this with you because you've really been there for me and you've made my life what it is. It was her fans who gave her permission to go and re-record her music so that she could own it again. They were just saying to me over and over again, we want to listen to your versions. If you redo it, that's what we'll listen yep. to. In March 2017, when the world was convinced her career had tanked, she filed a trademark for the term Swifties to protect her loyal fan base. The fans? came up with a name for themselves and it's so cute. They call themselves Swifties and it's adorable because they made it up on their own. You can't change music or change art or change anything without an army of ride or dies behind you. Stop hiding. Instead, communicate with your community. Open up to them, especially when your career is uncertain. They will give you the fuel you need to keep going. What you're trying to do here is Make it bigger than you. Congregation. When the culture turned against her, Taylor Swift decided to align her woes to the woes of society. Her battle with Scooter Braun was no longer just a battle between her and some guy who bought her masters. No. It was her battle against the patriarchy. After I was denied the chance to purchase my music outright, my entire catalog, was sold to Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings. This just happened to me without my approval, consultation, or consent. And let me just say that the definition of the toxic male privilege in our industry enabled this man to think, according to his own social media post, that he could buy me. And her battle against Kanye West wasn't just a battle against a man taking credit for her career. No, 
It was a battle against all men who take credit for women's hard work. She made the message in her music about more than just herself. She gave it layers by standing for something bigger. But honestly, none of that would mean anything if she didn't do the most important thing that an artist must do if they want to rise from the ashes. Keep making art. Lots and lots of it. I think the more art you create, hopefully the less pressure you put on yourself. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If you keep making stuff, hopefully you get better at it. You don't have to belabor it and polish the doorknob so long that you forget to open the door. When Scooter Braun stole her music, she decided to re-record her whole catalog all over again. Yes, all five albums worth from scratch. Now, could you re-record? Oh, yeah. Might you do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a plan? Yeah, absolutely. Because my contract says that starting November 2020, so next year, I can record albums one through five all over again. So you'll do that. I'm very excited about it. Why is this so important to you? Because I just think that I think that artists deserve to own their work. I just feel very passionately about that. Yeah. You probably don't know this, but most of your favorite artists do not own their work. Um, the music industry is... Uh, you know? And so I just figured I was the one who made this music first. I can just make it again. She basically said, you guys, even though you bought the master recording, I own the copyright. So I'm essentially going to create new masters by re-recording all of these songs and creating new oh my recordings God. with the intellectual property of the song that I own and ask my fans to stream that and ask the people who are licensing for sync to license that so that this vehicle is the wow. thing that makes the money. She re-recorded all those old songs while still somehow having energy and creativity left over to release brand new music as well. Albums that contained songs that talked about everything that she was going through. Whatever they criticized about me became material for musical satires or inspirational anthems. But when you finally start healing, don't expect the journey to be linear. Hi. Good morning. Trying not to think about you calling your Grammy nominations. Right now, um, in the main, the big categories of album, record, song, um, you are not nominated. Don't play the victim. Bounce back immediately. Oh, okay. It's, it's, um, this is good. This is fine. I just need to make a better record. Well, presentation is a great record. No, I'm making, I'm making a better record. As the world went into quarantine in March 2020, something unexpected happened. The full, unedited phone conversation between Taylor Swift and Kanye West was leaked, and it revealed that the whole 2016 drama was a setup. Kim Kardashian edited the conversation to make Taylor Swift look bad, like when Kanye told her the lyrics would be, To all my South Side that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex. The actual lyrics ended up being... And he conveniently never revealed the misogynistic line that she said that she was upset about. And she even says it in the phone call that she's so grateful he didn't call her a bitch. I thought it was gonna be like that stupid dumb bitch. And then she makes it very clear that she wants to think about it. I mean, I need to think about it because I just need to, like, you know, hear something for the first time and you just need to think about it. Yeah. Once this recording was leaked, the hashtag Taylor told the truth started trending. The tides were finally turning. Two months later, Taylor Swift released Folklore, which would go on to become the best-selling album of the pandemic. And four months after that, she finally started re-releasing her old albums to rave reviews. Everything was turning out exactly as she had predicted in her song, Karma, the last song she plays every night on her sold out tour. Where is Kanye West today? Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. I see good things about Hitler also. Where is Kim Kardashian today? The Kardashians have been lying to us for years. Kim Kardashian is a dirty little liar. I believe Kim Kardashian cursed herself by wearing Marilyn Monroe's dress. Where is Scooter Braun today? News popped up yesterday that Ariana Grande and Demi Lovato both dropped Scooter Braun. And then the even bigger story is that Justin Bieber 
is allegedly walking away from Scooter Braun. All in all, people are just really confused about why this is happening right now and why so many people are walking away from him. It is happening fast, relatively abruptly, with no rationality. There are no explanations. What the hell is going on in Scooter Braun's empire? When the Pizza Slime guys gifted me this t-shirt in 2016, it was just a funny fashion statement capturing the zeitgeist of the cultural moment. But today, it hits different. This t-shirt has become the ultimate symbol for everything that I teach in the mystery school. It's a reminder to every struggling artist out there that no matter how much people want to count you out right now, if you make the right moves, you too can come out on top. All you need to do is find your allies, make your journey about something bigger than yourself, and finally, make more art.